What is up you guys? I am DV Test and I have three new products to show you today from Open Flywheel Project. Uh, so I did testing and reviews on two of these. The third one is unfortunately still just a prototype that can't isn't quite ready for testing, uh, but I will have tests for you on that soon. So, going in order of potential release date, going in order of my excitement, let's do that in order. So, the first product is um, the Morpheus Guide, which as you can see here, is this brass piece. The cage is a standard cage. This is a 41 and a half millimeter gap cage. So what that means is that from this point to this point, the uh, shafts of the motors is 41 and a half millimeters, which is two millimeters closer together than a stock cage. That might not sound like a lot, but the performance gain is pretty intense. So going from a stock cage to a cage like this, you're probably gaining like 40 to 50 FPS. About. The Morpheus Guide is simply a drop-in piece that goes into any future 3D printed open flywheel cage. Uh, they are printed specifically with pieces to help align the guide so that the guide is always in the correct position, always uh, stable in there. Uh, you might have to glue it down a little bit. I would recommend doing so so that nothing uh, comes undone. but it'll always be perfectly centered. Uh, so this just helps with the accuracy. It will decrease FPS as you'll see, but the, you basically get to pick your trade-off. Decrease FPS and increase uh, accuracy or the other way around, just don't buy one of these. This guide will be compatible with any size crush open flywheel cage. So you can get a 40 you can get a 43 and a half millimeter cage, so stock crush and put one of these in, or you can get a 41 and a half millimeter crush cage and put this in too. Next on the excitement chart is Project Serenity. So this is a 42 millimeter cage. Um, and as you can see, it is completely machined the same way that Riot is. This is basically a middle ground between um, between standard performance and the highest performance. And this will fit FBJs if that's a thing you're into. Whatever. Um, this should be getting like 130 to 140 FPS, where stock cages usually get like 110 to 130 depending on your wheels, and high crush cages get like 140 to 150, 155. And last but not least, we have the thing I'm the most excited for, uh, which is inside here, and that is Eclipse. So if you look down the middle, I'll show you pictures, uh, you can see that the wheels actually go 360 degrees around. Uh, so what you see in here is a set of wheels that is unlike anything that we have seen yet in this community. And these wheels grip the dart 360 degrees around. So they have the maximum amount of um, they have the maximum amount of surface area touching the dart, and the dart is being crushed the same amount in every direction. So these in theory give you the best performance, and you will see that in this test. So the goal with Eclipse was to get into that mm, around 200 FPS range so it can compete directly with the caliber and other NIC primaries. Uh, as you'll see in this test, it doesn't quite that get there, depending on the dart-ish, but it gets really close and it's really exciting to see where this is going. It requires Wolverines on a 2S or Hellcats on a 4S because it needs that higher RPM for that higher crush. Uh, higher crush cages have a higher critical RPM. Um, I used Wolverines on a 2S because I don't have 4S battery lying around. However, I will do that testing later once this comes out, uh, once it officially comes out. A couple more quick notes before we dive right into testing. The Morpheus Guide is expected to drop next month. I don't know the prices yet, 
but it should be retailing just about anywhere you can buy open flywheel project cages right now uh, those will be the distributors for this as well and then eclipse is expected to have about a december release date and there are three different ways to buy the eclipse cage uh, you can either buy just the wheels and 3d print the cage yourself you'll be able to buy the wheels and buy a 3d printed version of the cage or you'll be able to buy the wheels with a metal version of the cage. Um, not sure if the release date for the metal version and the release date for the 3D printed version are different, uh, but this is still in the prototyping phase, so we have no idea exactly when it'll come out, but Phil is aiming for December. So I tested this primarily with waffle darts, um, and I shot it through a chronograph and did some real world range testing and a little bit of a mini 1v1 more just to see um, how well it will do in real life. So uh, basically here's the testing. So as you can see in the test results, we're not quite at that 200 mark with waffles yet. However, with, there are two darts that did get into that 200 range. Um, we got 260 at we got 216 FPS with the long range or long distance Busby darts. However, I've heard that their accuracy is on par with Elite, so not at all, um, which makes them kind of useless. There's no reason to have such a high FPS if you can't hit anything anyway. Um, Koosh darts also broke that 200 FPS, but if you saw in the um, range test, I was aiming directly at the camera, and there were a couple that just flew out there. Uh, my guess is that Koosh darts are just too light to be able to handle that high FPS, and we need a, some heavier darts. Of course, I'll do more testing with both of these, along with other kinds of darts in the future sometime. Maybe I'll have time for it at some point to see which ones are the most accurate for their FPS levels. We'll see. Moving on to other kinds of darts. Waffles did pretty well with a 162 average, which is about 12 FPS up from their average with riot, uh, with a riot cage, which is 41.5 millimeter crush, which was basically the highest crush you could get up until this point. It still makes it the highest FPS drop-in kit for a strike or rabbit strike that you could get right now. Not counting brushless stuff, because that's not really drop-in, because most people don't know how to brushless. And that was basically the goal, was to get the highest possible FPS out of a drop-in kit. Um, however, the real if, the real increase in FPS was with AccuStrike darts, which got a 175 FPS average, compared to the same AccuStrikes in a riot cage, which got a 155 average. That's a pretty big increase. And my favorite darts that went through this were the Busby Precise Pro darts, or as I call them, B2P2. Averaging 168 FPS, they got the highest FPS for darts that'll still perform well at that FPS, in terms of accuracy. I think these darts are probably the best balance of precision and velocity for this cage. Unfortunately, I didn't have a whole lot of them for testing, and they're hard to come by, and they're expensive. You can get them at Walmart, for a 35 pack for like nine dollars but that's kind of expensive compared to a lot of other darts in the market um, however if you want the best performance out of this cage I would go get some Busby Precise Pro darts uh, but as of right now my reasonable recommendation is to go get AccuFakes or AccuStrike and use those with this cage averaging 175 FPS and flying very straight at least until uh, B2P2 darts become significantly more easily available uh, and cheaper. On to the real world test. I mentioned earlier that I shot uh, both these at a camera. The camera was 30 yards away from me. Uh, I shot the Eclipse cage, the Morpheus cage, and a Boomco M6 with a K26 in it, mostly because that's kind of the like hobby standard for precision over long range not counting NIC like homemades, uh, at least in the world of super stock, not getting into like super high FPS stuff. Anyway, um, I decided to compare it against that because I had that on hand. Um, with the Eclipse cage, they easily cleared the camera and were pretty tightly grouped. 
for a, for trying to hit a tiny camera on a tiny tripod. Using the Morpheus guide cage, they were still really tightly grouped, a little bit tighter group than the Eclipse cage. However, they didn't quite reach the camera. They fell about five yards short, more or less. The K26 M6 uh, fell even further short of that, but still had very tight grouping. Um, about on par with the Morpheus cage. It's hard to say exactly which one had a tighter grouping, um, but I wouldn't pick the M6 over it. Even just based on grouping, it wasn't a big enough difference to pick the M6 over the uh, Morpheus guide cage. Um, of course, those were all the results with Accu Strike darts. With Kush darts, they kind of flew all over the place out of the Eclipse cage. They were definitely better out of Morpheus, but out of the Eclipse cage, they kind of just flew all over and were not accurate whatsoever. Like I said earlier, I think the lightweight of the darts makes them just horribly inaccurate at those high FPS rates. So on that note, if you think about it, the Eclipse cage kind of makes the Boomco M6 obsolete because now you can get further range and about as accurate out of a flywheel blaster that's mag fed. I guess Boomco is obsolete now. Oops. And because AccuStrike performed so well in the FPS test and the um, and the real world range test, I'm probably going to be switching to AccuStrike for the near future. Um, for the future for all my testing because that's also slowly becoming the hobby standard so that's probably going to start being my standard too. If you watch the footage from the little mini Nerf War I had 1v1 I used the Morpheus cage and she used the Eclipse cage and you can see that she's pretty comfy just standing there and taking shots at me most of which I actually had to go out of my way to dodge rather than just um, rather than just avoid, and I had to move about 10 yards further in before I could actually even come close to hitting her. Sorry. This was a much bigger challenge for me using the Morpheus cage than it was for her using the Eclipse cage. The difference in performance is astounding. Uh, and I think that had I not dodged as well as I did, she easily would have hit me with like half the dart she fired, um, in terms of accuracy over that distance. If we're going for all out range, I did a few angled shots with the Eclipse cage, with the Morpheus cage, and and with my standard HVZ strife that averages should be around 1 to 110 FPS. As you can see the result, each one of those is separated by about 10 yards, if not more, uh, in terms of where the majority of the darts landed. The furthest dart from the Eclipse cage carried to about 55 yards away, and there was basically no wind at all that day. So just to keep that in mind, of course, angled range shots don't really give you any sort of real world indicator, because how often are you just shooting range shots at people? Um, like you might hit something, but not that well. Needless to say, from how I've been talking about it, I'm really impressed with both of these products. <coughs> And these are only prototypes. I cannot wait to see what the finished product looks like. I'm definitely picking up one of each of these for my blasters. Um, there are definitely still a few things to work out with both of them, but I'm excited to see how they turn out. Basically, the only issues I have is with the um, Eclipse. It does a little bit more damage to your darts than I would like it to, but I think that's just the nature of, the, of having wheels like that. I don't think there's a whole lot that can be done about it. And the only issue I have with Morpheus is that it's a little bit more of a drop in FPS than I'd like it to be. It drops from 150 to like 130. It drops from like 150 to 130, which is a 20 FPS drop. Um, I think that might just be because it's a prototype. Um, I don't think it'll drop by more than like 10 FPS for the final product, but that remains to be seen. Um, of course, I will be doing more testing once I actually get the final products in my hands and come back with a follow-up video. That's basically all my thoughts. If you're interested in any of these products, I would recommend you follow the Open Final Project page on Facebook, and I'll have a few links in the description for some places where you can currently buy all the currently available cages online. That's it for me for today. Um, look out for a podcast out this week. 
featuring a bunch of NIC dudes, so you can hear about some old-timey homemade blasters and basically the type of wars that Eclipse is going to be trying to compete in, which I think it can do. Um, and look out for a video next week, hopefully, with a giveaway, maybe. We'll see. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't, don't.